All right, Mr. Sotko here, and welcome back to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. And today it is a one versus one on Feynmanville approach between our blue British Forces player, Say No to Stim. And up top, we have our red OKW player, GB Pirate. And we're going to go ahead and check out the map. It is Feynmanville approach with our victory points going straight down across the map. And we have our munitions point and fuel point at the bottom. And a fuel point and a munitions point at the top as well. And of course, our territory point all the way over here that nobody ever seems to grab. And we have the Stern Pioneers moving out to the very first territory point. The Schwer Wehrmacht Schlepper has stopped. Not bringing that out just yet. And the Volksgrenadier is moving over to the left side. The rear echelon troops moving over to the right side, taking that fuel point first after that first territory point. And two riflemen coming out for the U.S. forces here. One of them moving over to the left side of the map. Looks like going after this first territory point or perhaps going past it. We will see. And going to be taking that. And meanwhile, the other riflemen moving towards the same direction here. Rear echelon troops and the Stern Pioneers now going to be going at it. Stern Pioneers get inside the house there for some garrison cover. And looks like only one can fire at a time there, as though only one window was facing towards those rear echelon troops. And going to force these rear echelon troops on out of there in a quick hurry. Stern Pioneers always win. And going to back them out of there. Only two men left in that squad, otherwise... Uh, Riflemen moving over to the fuel point now. I'm going to run into these Volksgrenadiers real soon here. Now the Riflemen come in to defend the rear echelon troops, but got to watch out a little bit too close to the Stern Pioneers once again. So has to back out just a bit, get some range on them. Riflemen and the Volksgrenadiers going at it. Unfortunately, the Riflemen have no cover, so they need to get up close to that hay barrel for some cover, even though that doesn't make sense. And now going at it, three and three. Now the Volksgrenadier is losing out on that. Rifleman just so, so good at the beginning of the game. Had they not actually moved closer, though, they would have lost out on that fight as the Volksgrenadiers had superior cover. And Rear Echelon Troops now taking the top victory point. Decided not to take those back to base, not to reinforce them. And the Stern Pioneers still working on this fuel point. It's been a while. They were distracted a few times there by the Rifleman and the Rear Echelon Troops. Now Rifleman taking the center victory point. And now Riflemen firing at the Stern Pioneers once again. So far, no Stern Pioneers have been lost for GB Pirate. Just doing pretty good. Now just one uh, is lost there finally. And two victory points belonging to the U.S. forces. So it's just going to take down the score of the OKW player. 500 to 491. And it looks like these Riflemen should be able to finish off these Stern Pioneers. Only one Stern Pioneer can fire at a time out of this window here. So they're pretty much just taking turns uh, being shot in the chest from the window. Volksgrenadiers going up top. Going to chase away these rear echelon troops. Just two in this squad should have uh, probably retreat these on out of here. There's a small sliver of health. Finally retreats them back. And uh, the Volksgrenadier is going to be taking the munitions point up top and creating some sandbags as well for some cover up there. Meanwhile, riflemen moving up towards those Volksgrenadiers. And can they make these sandbags in time? And it doesn't look like that's the case, but perhaps they can get behind them without losing a man. And already lost one. Now going to get behind those sandbags, but uh, looks like a little too late as the riflemen are already a little close. Four to four, though. Very clutch battle up top there. And we'll come back to that. Now the uh, fuel point being taken. Riflemen taking the bottom victory point. Forces the Volksgrenadiers out of there. The Riflemen win the fight again. Again, Riflemen just so, so good. Volksgrenadier is trying to take the fuel point here. And they're going to get behind sandbags, so they'll have superior cover. But the Riflemen also have green cover as well. So it will be a battle of attrition, but I don't think the Riflemen will win out on this one. They're pretty low on health. We'll start losing men pretty soon. Volksgrenadier is trying to take the center victory point. Also have some Volksgrenadier garrisoned inside the house there for some additional uh, defense of the center. And we have some riflemen moving there now. So we'll see how they can deal with that. And be able to fire at them uh, from behind the stone wall. And I think the Volksgrenadier is back here. Going to be a little too far. Should take those out of there. Riflemen taking the top of munitions point. Meanwhile, back at the bottom, those riflemen not winning out on that battle and will soon have to retreat. Meanwhile, the riflemen and the Volksgrenadiers going at it here. And again, the Volksgrenadiers inside the house have to get out and need to charge at these riflemen and going to get over the fence there and try and get 
on the flank side of those riflemen, but a little bit too late. Decided to go already go around the appropriate side for those riflemen, and now the riflemen on the other side of the sandbags here, creating some mines. Very, very good idea indeed. Uh, with that infantry company, and those mines on the ground uh, behind those sandbags uh, may be pretty humorous later on, but he will probably, he may lose this rifleman here. And Storm Pioneers are reloading and loses that rifleman, so that was definitely not worth it to uh, stick around to put those mines, even if those mines go off on some troops. I uh, doubt it will take out a whole squad. Sometimes it can. I mean, RNG may shine on him. And uh, rifleman firing at Volksgrenadiers. Rifleman have the superior cover. Forcing the Volksgrenadiers on out of there. Volksgrenadiers inside the building here. Firing away at the Rifleman. Rear echelon troops inside the building here. A grenade goes in the garrison building and just barely makes it out before he takes any damage on that. And with the rear echelon troops, we have two, looks like two rear echelon troops firing out of the building at once. And four Rifleman here, so I don't think they'll last all that much longer. We do have some Volksgrenadiers here and some fresh Volksgrenadiers to replace the three in that squad. And now Storm Pioneer is running away from the Rifleman there. And all five Volksgrenadiers firing out of the front of this building and ate the grenade, didn't get out in time there, lost a man and about half the squad's health as well. So they're gonna start losing troops out of there really quickly. And on the left side here, did finally take that territory point that nobody ever takes. And Volksgrenadiers down to two men and a small sliver of health there. And need to get out of that building pretty quickly. Two Volksgrenadiers down here. One of them looks like he's going towards the fuel point, victory point at the bottom. And here comes some more Volksgrenadiers to replace the broken Volksgrenadiers. Rifleman going to take the place of them. And this Volksgrenadier needs to get out of there. And looks like four Volksgrenadiers and the Stern Pioneer. Along with that ISG and four riflemen and a, the rear echelon troop for the U.S. forces. Americans are making a push. And now the Volksgrenadiers here going to be taking the munitions point from the U.S. forces. Meanwhile, the U.S. forces all the way up top taking the territory point. A very interesting battle going on indeed. Now the Volksgrenadiers and Rifleman going at it. A grenade's gonna land right on these Volksgrenadiers, and they're gonna eat that pretty well. Three men, or two men lost in that squad, leaving three men, and a small uh, chunk of health, about a third of their health, or a quarter of their health left. So if he would've just juked that out, I think he would've definitely won out on that fight. They had superior cover over those Rifleman. Rifleman just had these uh, random boxes, which look, look, look kinda look like uh, Panzerfaust boxes. Got a little caught up, I think I got a dry throat here. <laughs> now the Volksgrenadier is holding out in the center. Rifleman and Volksgrenadier is down at the bottom. Just a battle of troops so far, and there goes an incendiary grenade. For the most part, misses that squad. A little bit of damage, and here is a grenade of their own. Definitely does not miss that Volksgrenadier squad. Takes out two of those men and lowers the health of the squad entirely. And looks like a 75 is firing. No, an ISG uh, is firing on those uh, riflemen there. And now the riflemen kind of go to the fuel point. Going to try and take this back. And the ISG lost sight. But as soon as these Volksgrenadiers come up, we'll start firing on them. And they are very close range, so that ISG will be uh, much more accurate. And just barely misses right behind them. And Volksgrenadier is going to try and hold out against these two riflemen. But for how long? I don't know. It looks like one of the riflemen has an M1919. And another Volksgrenadier take their place. There goes a, a decent ISG uh, shell. Takes out one of them. Pins the other squad, and I'm not so sure about the pinning of the 75 and the ISG lately. I think it's a little overpowered uh, to just instantly pin troops um, with those uh, artillery shots from the 75 and the ISG. Uh, lately, the uh, recent few patches have made it so, and it's uh, kind of annoying. Uh, you see a lot of people just massing those. And uh, it gets a little old when you get pinned over and over from halfway across the map. And now the captains 
inside the building. Gonna hold out for a little while and just chucking bazookas at these Volksgrenadiers, but they're behind, behind excellent cover here, so they should last out for a while. Meanwhile, two other Volksgrenadiers gonna move around the side, could throw an incendiary grenade from across the way from behind the bushes here. Now an M5 Stewart moving across the map and going right after these Stern Pioneers. Stern Pioneers decide to run away. They don't have any way to deal with that, and a lucky shot there takes out two of those men. And looks like no incendiary uh, grenade actually went off in that building. Just forced the captain uh, back out of there with some riflemen and rear echelon troops. Two riflemen just standing around here, just having a, a gaggle fuck around this dead cow. And now the Volksgrenadiers holding out pretty well. Some Volksgrenadiers over here hiding behind this real nice looking uh, Jeep Kuba wagon or whatever you want to call that Volkswagen of some kind. M5 Stewart takes a shot to the face from that Panzer Shrek. And looks like another shot is coming in shortly here. And got to back out just out of range. And now lots of M1919s all over these troops. You know, moving up towards the tractor here to get some... Uh, nope, going to move right past that instead. And now uh, the riflemen need to stop this Panzer Shrek from moving at, at the uh, M5 Stewart there. Uh, meanwhile, trying to take uh, the victory point back here, the OKW, and the top of the map, the whole top of the map, is owned by the U.S. forces and is completely uncontested right now by the OKW. OKW not moving up there, not moving up. Uh, even a single troop up there would uh, take over uh, lots of this territory. Even just one Volksgrenadier or the Stern Pioneer could just come up here alone and pretty much take over all that territory. And now we have the Riflemen taking over the fuel points. So now the U.S. forces is going to own the entirety of the bottom side of the map. And now the Jagdpanzer is out on the map. And moving forward. And ISG firing away at the troops there, but he re, uh, retreats them before it lands on them. Stern Pioneer is not going to take over that fuel point. And M5 Stewart backs out from that uh, Jagdpanzer. And uh oh, he's in the sight of that Jagdpanzer. Jagdpanzer just needs to turn. And I don't know what this Jagdpanzer is doing. There he goes. And hits the back side, the rear armor of that M5. That was a pretty excellent shot. And now gonna hit it again in the frontal armor. Just a small sliver of health left. And one more shot. Gonna finish off that M5 Stewart. No more armor for the US forces. And that victory point does belong to the OKW now. And the fuel point soon will be long, be long <laughs> to the OKW. And the Volkskunner is gonna move down to the bottom victory point and take that back as well. And I'd still like to see some of the top being taken back. Just the Stern Pioneers could just come up here and that one, that one. Just pretty much take those over. There's uncontested by both players. 75 now firing away and trying to fire at the troops at this battle group headquarters, which is always a good idea. There's almost always troops at a battle group headquarters for the OKW. When in doubt, 75, the battle group headquarters. I suppose that is words to live by. As you see, there's just always something around a battle group headquarters. You pretty much just close your eyes, spin around in circles a couple times, and click near a battle group headquarters, and you're bound to hit something. Now the Volksgrenadier is moving out to the bottom side of the map. The captain and the rifleman moving out as well. And I really enjoy seeing these M1919s. You don't actually don't see that too often. Captain going to take over the victory point right after he just took it. And so needs to send some additional troops down there. Meanwhile, trying to take the center here. Two Volksgrenadiers uh, going to defend the center pretty well. Just the riflemen and rear echelon troops. Probably not going to be enough to take all that out. Captain down here taking neutralized that victory point. Meanwhile, Volksgrenadier holding out with this rifleman here behind the excellent cover. Volksgrenadiers have inferior cover. Need to bring another Stern Pioneers around as well. And there goes that 75. Just missing. Hits a tree. Combat ready. And 75 flying around. Ew, and hit those directly. Took out two or three of them out of that squad. And here comes some Fallschirmjägers right behind these riflemen. This is definitely a good bet. Oh, and those Fallschirmjägers eat a grenade. And down to two men there. That would have been a good bet as long as they would have went around the other side of the wall there. If they would have just moved just a few feet around, they would have gotten huge, huge hits on these riflemen. Now the riflemen are going to make some M5 mines on the ground there. we got to watch out. The ISG is firing. And if they complete this mine, 
and that ISG hits at the right time, uh, it will explode in their faces. That would be very interesting to see. Volkswagen is going to be trying to take that territory point. Meanwhile, down at the bottom. Oh, come on, ISG. Oh, almost. Would have been very fun to watch. Three Volks Grenadiers here, reinforcing and healing up. Need to move these out really quickly to take back some territory. Riflemen, two Riflemen over here, uh, to trying to deal with one Volks Grenadier. Not going to happen here. Going to have to retreat out of there very soon. Meanwhile, a 57 has been brought up. Another uh, 75 being set up. Or it looks like another 75 is being produced, which will be coming out shortly here. And lands almost directly on that ISG. Looks like it hit the Fallschirmjäger as well. And so now that 75 is going directly after that uh, ISG there. So he has to move that to a different location. And Jagdpans are still ready to go in case any armor appears on the map. Uh, meanwhile, Volksmaneers were trying to sneak up to that territory point. But not going to happen with the M1919 in there. Uh, in that rifleman inside that building there. And now 275s out on the map for the U.S. forces and healing up at that ambulance. We are at 200 points. Down at the bottom, Stern Pioneer is going to be taken back at this victory point and standing right on that mine, but does have that mine detector, so going to get rid of that. Both Grenadiers chilling behind this totally broken tractor. But totally broken tractors make excellent cover. And now going to be battling that with the riflemen across the way here, right next to the house. It looks like the riflemen are in a woodshed. And battling that with the Volksgrenadiers. Volksgrenadiers not going to last too long. They do have really, really good cover. But I just don't think these uh, these riflemen will do it. But it looks like those Panzer Treks were actually getting some really good hits since they were so close together. Uh, the explosion, the AOE of that uh, Panzer Trek there, it actually did quite a bit of damage. Uh, meanwhile, in the center... Reifman and rear echelon troops trying to take the center victory point. Just one man left in this squad. And if you could just simply aim on this squad, uh, that Jagdpanzer there is uh, focusing on vehicles. And if that Jagdpanzer was not focusing on vehicles, he may actually have finished that squad. And Stir Pioneers juke out that grenade a little bit. And another grenade goes down, but they juke that one out too. Very, very nice. And multiple 75s now blasting away at the Volkswagen and you can see it pins them instantly, which is just, mm, you just kind of tilt your head to the side when that happens to you, and you go, mm, and you kind of roll your eyes and retreat your units. I just don't like that mechanic. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, a mortar should kind of make you get down a little bit, because, you know, you don't want to die, but uh, instantly pinning, it's a little bit frustrating. Shvera Panzer headquarters being set up right on the fuel point. Really like this position for that. Uh, it's pretty good. Not too many ways you can really exploit that. Uh, maybe you can possibly hide back here, but uh, not uh, not too many exploitable ways. But he does have 275, so he has to watch out for that. 275s can simply just aim on that and eventually take that down. So if he does do that, he will be forced to actually have to push forward and uh, at least push these back or take them out entirely. Now blasting down here at the Battle Group Headquarters. A Priest is out on the map and just firing away uh, at the Headquarters and at the area around the Headquarters. Unfortunately, nothing there right now. He actually moved all the way to the back side of the Headquarters. Fallschirmjäger is now moving around to the bottom, trying to get to the munitions point there. Forced away the Stern Pioneers, but here is the Fallschirmjäger's turn. And blasting away with those Fallschirmjäger Gewehrs and does such huge damage. Unfortunately, the riflemen do huge damage as well, particularly with those uh, A6 machine guns. Uh, just so good. Again, something you don't see every day. Just uh, this, uh, uh, the infantry company isn't used all the time, and when it is used, you don't really see people using that too much. I cast a lot of one versus one replays, and I actually don't see that uh, rifle a lot. Or priest, for that matter. Uh, very, very nice to see a priest. Now, in a four versus four or something like that, you will see a priest once in a while. But in a one versus one, not so much. Uh, M1919 is laying on the ground. This is up for grabs. and looks like the Volkswagen is going to take that. Yoink. Definitely take that. That is a very good rifle. And those uh, two 75s just hammering away. It looks like that 175 was actually decrewed. 
and I didn't see where it went. No, it was just um, uh, a retreating unit there, an AWOL unit. Now Rifleman moving out again. And here are the Volksgrenadiers. And these two squads here are going to... Ooh, and they took a wicked hit there. Looks like 275s hit at the same time by the looks of it. Um, or this one hit directly and uh, took out like four of them at once. That was a nasty hit. And that whole squad is now down. And now two Volksgrenadiers going to try and hold out. And they do have that A6 and a Panzer Shrek. So they should be able to hold out a little while. Dish out, dish out some decent damage. Except the infantry is just pushing forward as fast as they can. Now hiding behind those boxes. Ooh, incendiary grenade goes down on all of them. They are all really burning now. And the rear echelon troops just decide to stand in there. And loses that whole squad to an incendiary grenade. And Volksgrenadier is in trouble. Only one man left. And there he goes. Runs away. Panzer two now out on the field, and the retreating unit ran right into the fire. It loses that unit as well. Now Falschemjägers, Sturm Pioneers now moving forward, and an excellent duo. I really like this duo, Falschemjägers and Sturm Pioneers. Such insanely high damage, uh, and such glass cannons and insanely high damage running around together. Pretty fun. Really like that. And two uh, uh, riflemen here going to force away the Falschemjägers, and very soon the Sturm Pioneers as well. But he did decrew at least. One of those 75s. I don't know where the other 75 went. Oh, it's up here. So decrewed both of those 75s. Uh, can easily recrew those, but will cost his opponent quite a bit to do that. And he'd actually have to uh, take them both out of the uh, rifleman squads and then reinforce all of those squads. Reinforce the 75 and reinforce the infantry as well. So it costs you quite a bit to do so. Panzer II now backing up. And now right from moving up to the victory point. Still the top side of the map, completely uncontested. I just, um, even just one unit up here would have would have been able to take all this. Uh, now there's a rifleman up here, but uh, for the longest time there certainly wasn't. And uh, that priest uh, looks like it's just now firing again, or is it the 75? It looks like the priest does not have a target right now. And 75 just blasting away. And landed right near that Luke's there. Very good shot. Falschemjägers now moving forward again. Volksgrenadiers have made it to the territory point. These Volksgrenadiers are trying to take the victory point, but pinned by the yeah, artillery there. And now the priest is firing at those troops as well. Here comes the Jagdpans. They're going to finish off this... Uh, priest, if he doesn't move this back immediately, but moving it back is going to be hard uh, as this uh, ambulance is sort of in the way. Would he actually have to kind of go around like that? Uh, now the priest is du uh, done. Uh, burning wreckage from that Yag Panzer. Panzer II now moving in uh, on that 57. Going to finish that off. Now just some riflemen standing around. Now it just looks like four riflemen uh, and a captain left on the field for the U.S. forces. Luke's now harassing just these two riflemen here, trying to reinforce them best he can. Not happening. A lieutenant is now on the way, and I'm not sure if that's the best idea or not, as the lieutenant really doesn't have any way to deal uh, with this armor, and says GG, and surrenders. Really great game. At the beginning of the game, it was quite even, but uh, the armor pretty much turned it around, um, and just some better play overall. And I think what happened is just a little bit too much uh, artillery with the priest. I think the priest uh, wasn't the, the the greatest idea. It didn't really turn out too well for him. He didn't get too many kills on it. And uh, investing all the money in these two pack howitzers really didn't turn out all that well for him. He did get a few really good shots in um, on his troops uh, a few times here and there, which were pretty, which was pretty good. But uh, I think it just cost him a little bit too much money. So in the end, he didn't have the uh, necessary materials to really push out and uh, defeat the troops when they actually came up to him. Uh, in the priest, he could have gotten a tank for that and uh, dealt with the Jagdpanzer uh, and the Panzer II instead. But I hope you guys enjoyed this replay, and I will see you guys next time.